This is Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial number two. If you haven't seen number one, I'll include the link in the description below. Um, but we're gonna jump right in from where we left off at the end of the first one. Um, and I believe I mentioned that we were gonna go into uh, how to cut images, how to edit what part of a video you wanna keep or exclude, to resize them. Um, as well as maybe reverse some clips, do some slow motion, um, adjust the volume of clips, do a little bit of ducking, and maybe add in a title or two, and then um, go into actually exporting your final product. And again, we're not going into crazy detail into everything there is to do in Adobe Premiere. I'm just looking to be able to get the basics down so that um, it gives you something to build on, whether you go and look at other YouTube videos from there, um, but this is the basis to kind of get started. So, so we'll jump right back into the Premiere project that we were working on before where I was doing a test project. So in the test project, uh, we currently have a video clip that we adjusted some volume to. Um, we added a picture, put a white background in, um, added a second picture, and these are just random video files and clips just so that we have something to work with. What we're gonna start with is a different video clip. Again, if you look over, just as a reminder, um, you have bins on the bottom left-hand corner. Um, we set those up. There was a music audio bin, pictures bin, video bin, and then the actual project file called test project. Um, we're gonna look in the video folder or bin, and I'm going to select um, one of these other clips. We already used uh, pick, um, MVI 7313 file name. And you can see that over on your timeline or sequence that it's named that down here. Um, so I'm gonna click on the second clip and this happens to be a clip of a pump on a wood splitter. Um, I was trying to show that it was leaking. So um, this clip indicates that it's in the bottom right hand corner of the clip window, you can see that it's 20 seconds and 19 frames. Um, we're not gonna need 20 seconds and 19 frames to get our point across. So I'm just gonna kind of play this through and you can hear the engine running in the background. Um, that's something else we'll talk about. You may want that noise and you may not. Um, I'm gonna indicate that we don't need that noise today, but you can see that the pump is dripping a lot right there. So I'm just gonna click the little playhead in that window back to that point a little before it, press play again. And again, you can use your space bar to pause and to play just by hitting that space bar, which I use all the time. Um, I use my mouse in my right hand and my left hand is on the keyboard using keystrokes sometimes, but not often. Um, but I do use the space bar almost all the time. So I'm gonna click that back to a point where I think I'm gonna have to start using that clip. And sure enough, it starts dripping right after that. So I'm just, I left my mouse in that area. I'm gonna click back there. It stops the video playing. Um, if you look right above that, I'm gonna circle it on my screen. There are two different icons here. One is an actual film clip. And if you were to drag that clip, it would drag the entire video clip, 20 seconds and 19 frames, but it would drag just the video down to your timeline. If you were to select just that audio wave that's next to it, and drag that down, it's gonna drag just the audio. Now you have to place those on the correct layers. Um, you know, if it's video on the upper layers where it's V1, V2, V3, or audio has to go down on A1, A2, A3. And you wanna be sure you don't lay it on top of one of the other clips that are already in your project. But if you were to just click on the actual video screen where it's playing and drag that down, it's going to drag both the audio and the video for that entire clip. Now, what I'm gonna show you is that you don't always wanna drag every clip down into your project and end up with 20 seconds down in your project and then edit it down in your project because sometimes that's a little cumbersome. Um, what I like to do often is, and I'm just gonna um, delete that from the project I just showed you, how to drop it in there. Um, I'm gonna indicate using this timeline up here, making sure there's a blue box around my frame, I'm going to click on the playhead where I want it to start, and I'm going to, um, there's this bracket right here down below, okay? And when you leave your mouse on any one of these icons, it'll tell you what that bracket does. And that one says mark in, and it has a little eye 
Um, and the one to the right of it says mark out with a little O in parentheses, which means if you hit the I on the keyboard, you're gonna get a mark in point and O is going to give you a mark out point. So virtually what we can do is move our playhead to a spot on the timeline. We wanna start the in point and I'm gonna hit the I on my keyboard right now. And you can see that puts a line above the playhead. You move it over, you can see that little bracket there and this area is lighter gray off to the right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit the space bar and let it play out a little bit so that I can see that it actually is dripping from that pump, that fluid. And then I'm gonna hit the space bar and stop the playing. At that point, I'm gonna hit the O on my keyboard and that's going to put another bracket indicating the O point. And now you can see that lighter gray area. That's the area that is selected by the in and out points. Again, I want both the in, I, I want both the video and the audio. So I'm gonna take this entire clip and drag that down to my timeline. Um, I'm also gonna point out that right now I do not have my layers linked. Um, so I'm gonna click on that uh, button. And what that does is if I click on my video, it now selects both my video and audio. So if I were to move them, they would be moving together. If that's not blue or selected, and I'm, you have to click off of the clip to see the reaction from that. If I click on my video clip and move that, it will move independent of the audio. I think I mentioned that in the prior uh, tutorial, but it's worth going over again. And it tells me how far off it is. So I'm just gonna hit Control Z, again, a favorite or Command Z, depending on if you're on a Mac or PC. Control Z for PC, Command Z for a Mac. And now I'm going to uh, link those selections on again. Now, my problem is I want this video clip and audio clip to show at the beginning of my project, but there's no space before that first project. And I'm sure there's more than one way to do this. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select that video clip that I want and move it over just a little bit to create a little space between it and that last clip. And now what I'm gonna do is just click up above the area where my audio, I mean my video and picture files are. Click and drag an area that will include all of the clips in my project at the beginning. And I'm just gonna move those clips over to the right a little bit. And then I'm gonna go back and select that video clip and drag it to the beginning of my project, right all the way to the left-hand side. And rather than going back and having to select all of these clips and making sure that I have everything selected, there's a nice little keystroke you can do with your mouse actually, is if you click into that space in between those two video clips and then you right click in that area, you get something called ripple delete. And when I click on that, it jumps all of the video and audio from the right and pulls it over to meet up with that last video clip. That way you don't have to move them independently or find them as a group. And that's really handy when you get into some projects that might be a little bit longer and a little more in detail. All right, so now we've got this new video clip in here and you'll notice it's much shorter. It's indicated by here. If I double click on this other longer clip, I just want you to see this. It shows the preview up, up in the upper left-hand corner. You can also see that there's a light gray area above the entire clip that indicates that I use that whole thing. If I go back and double click on that first clip, you're gonna see that the entire timeline now for that clip is grayed out. But if you also notice the time of that has been reduced down to only the amount of time that's in your project, 423. If I were to go back over to the media area in the bottom left-hand corner and double click on that clip, it's gonna bring me back to the original clip and show me what section of that video I've used. And sometimes that's handy if you were looking for an additional clip that you haven't yet used, but it's part of an original clip, that kind of thing. So. That's how you would select a portion of a clip from your media area to select and drop down into your project. The other way that we can edit video clips is to click on the razor tool, which is in this panel here. And if you click on that razor tool or move your mouse onto it, it also shows you the keystroke, which is another one that I use. Um, by hitting the C key, it's the same as if I click on that, the razor turns blue. Normally, I'm, I've got the selection tool or hit the V key and that will give you the selection tool. In the beginning, it's always easier to just click on the icons, but you'll find after a while going back and forth, clicking on things and going to and fro is time consuming. And if you're editing a lot of video, um, you wanna speed things up and make it easier for your workflow. So at this point, I'm gonna hit the C key. It changes to the razor blade. 
And then I'm going to come over to this video clip and just say, I want to cut this video in this location. I click on it and it makes a cut to both the video and the audio because I have those linked and those two were together to begin with. If I wanted to delete that video clip that I had just cut, I would have to switch back to the arrow tool by clicking on the V key or clicking on it and then click on the clip you want to delete and then just hit the delete key on your keyboard. Now you end up with that black space and at this point I would right click in that space and hit ripple delete. That's going to pull my video clip over. Now let's say I decide, wait a second, that isn't what I wanted to do. You could hit control Z. But I also want to point out that even though we've cut that video clip, the original still exists in the background. If I wanted to, I could select those three clips that are after that and move those back off to the side and then move my mouse to the very edge of the clip. And you'll see that it turns into like a red bracket with a red arrow on it. At that point, you can click and drag that clip all the way back out to bring back all of the video footage. And that is the same. I'm just going to show you on that first clip. I'm going to move all this stuff over. That first clip, even though we selected just that one portion of that clip, we could drag back more from the end of the clip and or move the clip over and drag back from the beginning of the clip. And now we have that entire 20 second clip. I'm just going to undo several steps in order to get me back to where we were a minute ago. So control Z, control Z, control Z, now we're back to the nice shortened clip that we chose in the beginning. I hit control Z one more time. It should get rid of this space and it does. I'm going to ripple delete that space that we created when we move those clips over. And now we've kind of got a tight project here. That's and you can do that with pictures as well. If you wanted to cut a picture, you can go to the edge of the picture. And again, don't forget you can zoom in wherever your playhead is by clicking and dragging on one of these handles on the end of this gray, light gray bar down at the bottom. So it zooms in on that area. I can then take the right side, click on it and drag it in and shorten it. And you'll notice the gray box that shows up, it tells me what I'm subtracting from the duration. And then it says the duration is equal to three seconds and 12 frames, which is nice because if you wanted to indicate each clip or each picture to be three seconds, you could very easily drag that back until you got to close to three seconds and then leave it there. So let's say we just wanted to add a really easy title at the beginning of the project that says test project at it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag the area of all of the items in my project. And as you can see, it's zooming out right now. So let me redo that for a second. I'm going to zoom out so I can see my entire project on the timeline. I like to pull my playhead back to the beginning of the project to make sure that I can see everything in the project. And as you can see, we can see everything now. I'm going to select all of the items on my timeline and move them over just a little bit for the time being so that I can fit a title in here. Now, if I just decide I want a title at the beginning of the project and there's nothing on the timeline, the background is going to be black until I specify otherwise. So what I'm going to do there's several different ways to add a title. The obvious one on the screen right now is to go to this little panel on the side where the tools are. And if you move your mouse over the T, text is the first thing that comes to mind. It's the typing tool. And you can click on that T and then up in the top right hand corner, it's a black screen. If you click and drag an area on your screen, and I tend to do it so that it fills up the middle area of the screen and let go. It turns into a text box. Now, for me, it doesn't show anything right now, but I let go and I know it's there. So I'm just going to start typing test project. And now that text is a little bit small and I don't really like the way it looks. So I'm going to now show you how to adjust any clip that's in your project. But for now, we just want to adjust the text. I want it to be larger and I want it to be centered. So I'm going to select or highlight all the text in my text box and come over to the left side where it says effects controls. And I'm also going to look down on my timeline and verify that that now new clip that's on my timeline is selected. It's white. And if I click on effects control, it's going to tell you information regarding that. Okay. There's stuff up here, vector motion. We're not going to look at that right now, but right here you see it says text and it says test project and we know that's what we want to affect. So I'm going to click on the little arrow to the left of it 
and you're gonna see some very standard common things that you'd see in any uh, word processing software. Um, so if you scroll down, you have to be careful because I'm scrolling up and down using my mouse and my mouse happened to be on the text font style. So it's automatically changing whatever this is. So I find that to be a little bit of a frustration. So if you want to scroll up and down, make sure you're not over one of these other icons that is a box because it will change whatever it is that's in that box and it can be frustrating. So I'm going to leave it at the Lucidia, Lucida calligraphy or whatever it's called um, because it's there and we might as well. And right here, instead of typing, you can type in a number by clicking on that blue 100 or you can drag this toggle bar left and right to adjust the size of your text. So I think that's probably a good size. And then I'm also going to center the text by clicking on that icon. Um, and I'd say that's probably in a pretty good spot. Um, and we'll just leave it at that. I don't want to get into too much on how to format things. I just want to make sure I get you to be able to put something in your project and make it so that people can understand what it is that you're trying to do. After you get the basics down, then you can go back in and reformat things and get things to move and do all those things. Um, you can, if you scroll down a little bit more under appearance, you can change the color of it just by clicking on uh, the fill box and picking whatever color you want. I have a black background, so I'm just going to leave it white because it really shows up well against that. Um, so click OK and that would be it. Now if you look down on your timeline onto V1 layer, when you created that text box, it created a new title on that V1 layer. Just like a picture or a video clip, you can click and drag to expand the length, how long it shows up in your project, or how short you want it. Uh, as you click on that edge, it tells you how long it is. Again, the left-hand number shows you how much you're increasing or decreasing the size of your uh, title in terms of time and then the right side of the duration tells you how long it actually is. I don't want a 15 second title so I'm just going to reduce that down to be six seconds and then I'm going to right click in that space between my title and my video project and hit ripple delete. If I pull my playhead back to the beginning of my project and hit the space bar you can see the playhead move along your timeline and then in the upper right hand corner this is what's playing. It jumps right into the audio of that pump leaking and then it's going to jump to the wide angle of the splitter and then you can see that the audio if you watch down on the timeline down here while the video is playing you can see that audio is going to reduce right about now it's going to start getting softer and then it's going to flatten out you'll probably still hear a little bit of it not too much and then later on in the project where you see these points, which we created with the pen tool or the P key on your keyboard and clicking and dragging to adjust the audio ramp down and ramp back up. Let's add, we've got a title at the beginning. We've got our video clips that we edited and we've got um, our pictures at the end. So Let's add a music file. So I'm going to go to the bottom left hand corner where all our media is and I'm going to close the video tab and I'm going to go into the music and audio bin and see that we had put one or imported one music file. Um, I'm just going to click and drag it from the media bin over to my timeline and make sure that it's not overlapping that audio from the video we had before and drag it down to the A2 layer below it and drag it right back to the beginning of the project. And you'll notice that it's much more narrow in terms of height. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually double click on that black area to the right so that we can see a little bit more of that audio layer and see all those audio waves. So now when I play the project from the beginning, pull the playhead back to the beginning, hit the space bar. So we've got a little bit of nice music now in the beginning. It's not as boring, even though it's boring. It's not as boring as it was before. 
but that audio is still really loud on the part where the splitter is being shown up real close and there's a leak. So I'm gonna move my playhead over that clip and I'm gonna zoom in using the scroll ball on this bar at the bottom. And that gives me a really big close up view of that individual clip. And what I wanna do is I wanna reduce the volume of this entire clip. I can do this in two ways. And there's a difference in each one of them, but if I were to see this white line that goes through the middle of this clip, just click on that and drag that down. It tells me how many decibels underneath it in that gray box, how far down it's actually reducing that volume. I'm gonna reduce it down to 25. Now there's a difference between that and audio gain. Um, I'm not gonna go into that for today's purposes. Just know that that is one way to reduce the volume of that clip as a whole. So if I were to play that now with the music, hitting the space bar, it's not so overbearing to the music and isn't annoying to the person who's watching it. So to show you ducking, I'm gonna choose this second video clip and audio clip. And um, what you do after you click on the, on the audio tab, um, up at the top it says essential sound, we're gonna tell it that we want this to be considered dialogue. We want this to shine through the music uh, when we listen to the final project. So you just click on that as dialogue. Nothing else to change in that right now. Then go down to the music layer, click on the green music layer, and tell it that that is music. And we do want to be specific about this. We want to tell the program to duck the music whenever there is dialogue above it. And then after we do that, all we're gonna do is click generate keyframes. And what you should see are little points that drop down during that clip and then drop back up. So if we were to bring the playhead down here right close to this and listen to it. Music is very soft in the background, but it's still playing. And then if you come to the end of the clip and play it again, as the video ends, the pictures come in and there's no sound with those, so the volume goes back up. Now, you might ask, well, why don't you just put the dots on those lines and then leave it at that? The reason you don't wanna do that is, if I were to do that and I were to take these, say I needed to add something, I decided I wanted to add something to my project. Let me go back to editing so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, say I wanted to add something to the beginning of this project. I'm just double clicking in this black area and it's shrinking down these so I can see a little bit more of my timeline. I'll drag this down a little bit. So I'm gonna click on and move over all of these clips and leave that first clip in there and I wanted to move something over in here. Now again, if I double click on that audio clip, it was ducking when that clip was showing up. So now it's ducking in the wrong spot. Because if I had pictures or something else here that I just wanted to go over, it's not ducking in the right spot. But the beauty of it is, is we identified each clip as what they are. The green lower one is music and the upper one as dialogue. So if I go back to my audio, all I have to do is click on my music and say generate keyframes again. And it should move those points over. You don't have to go and change anything as long as you classify each clip as what they are or what they're being used for in your project, then it will work really well. So that was a pretty long lesson. I don't wanna go into any more of that today. Um, I think what we'll do is do an Adobe Premiere tutorial number three for fine tuning a few things and exporting. And that should really get everybody up and running on a basic project in Adobe Premiere Pro. So, if you haven't seen the first Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial, the link is in below, and the uh, exporting tutorial will be following, and that'll be called Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial number three. And that'll probably be all I do for my projects because there's so many other good tutorials on how to do different things um, out there that I just wanted to focus on the basic core part of doing an Adobe Premiere project. So. Hopefully, you'll be able to get some resources from the prior video or the future video as well as this one, and they helped you out quite a bit. Thank you.